All right. Uh, hey, guys. Um, my name is Mike McElroy. I'm the defensive coordinator at Bethel University in St. Paul, Minnesota. We are a small uh, Division three school playing the MIAC. Uh, today, we're going to uh, – here's my contact information just before we get going uh, at McElroy at Bethel.edu. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at, at McElroy26. Uh, it's probably the best way to get a hold of me. Uh, just send me a DM uh, or send me an email. Uh, thanks, Coach, for having me. This is fun. Always getting to share some stuff and be able to do some of this uh, for the coach community. Learned a ton from some of your videos and some of the stuff that other guys are posting. So I'm uh, just really thankful for an opportunity here today. Uh, as we get rolling here, we're going to talk some man-free stuff. Uh, we're a small, uh, small little private Christian school here in, in the Twin Cities, like I said, and uh, we, we've had to kind of teach this and and make it really a culture here uh we play a ton of kind of middle of the field closed defense we're going to be cover three or man free probably 97 percent of the time um so we're going to talk to kind of how we teach it today and why we believe in it a uh, big thing i always like to do before i get rolling on some of these clinics is uh, just talk about the the high calling man as coaches it's a big deal kind of who we are and what we what we do with these young guys there's no other place in the in the country no other job in the country that you have the attention of 15 to 20 year old guys and so uh what we're feeding them what we're giving them i think is a big deal so as you guys are going just know it's a high calling uh, make sure we're talking about more than football uh teaching these guys how to be men how to grow up um give them the tools to, uh, to have a great impact on their community um, once they're done with football. So it's my charge to you guys today. We'll get into some football stuff. So here's a lot of what everything goes uh, as far as how we're installing stuff, how we're coming up with new plays, how we're coming up with schemes. Uh, this is a big deal for us. So we're going to work hard to stay simple. Uh, I was telling Coach before I was a uh, quarters guy my whole life uh <clears throat> learned from jerry kill worked for him at minnesota for two years and tracy plays uh big quarters guy i got everything from tcu um you know we were friends with patterson and so we studied a lot of quarters a lot of michigan state a lot of tcu um and, and i enjoy quarters i think there's great stuff with it um, i think there's a lot of teaching that goes with it so <clears throat> our uh, our switch to kind of man free cover three stuff uh was in a Thing to try to stay simple we think simple allows you to play fast we all talk about wanting to be physical wanting to play downhill want to get guys rolling uh, i don't think guys can play fast and play physical unless they know what they're doing um and so we think it eliminates excuse as well uh, i can't tell kids well hey you didn't get this check in this or you forgot this check or hey you got to spin to this if this and so <clears throat> it puts more on us as coaches we have to teach the base fundamentals we have to teach the base philosophies um and unless our kids execute it we also think it allows us to get our best players on the field, right? So if you've got a sophomore who is super talented, but he's got to wait to learn the system, right? Or uh, he isn't smart enough, right? Or, oh, we, I got whatever the, the excuses are. We got dumb kids, right? So um, I think that's on us as coaches to be able to fix that um, and make it to where our best players can play and get on the field. <clears throat> now, the last thing we're going to talk about, uh, and kind of this goes into as we draw blitz, is how expensive is it? Um, for our guys right so everything that you do that's new uh, is going to take time to teach it's going to take time to install it's going to take time to draw it's going to take time to rep um, and so we want to tweak our base we want to be able to adjust off of it but we also don't want to be very expensive now flip side of that we want to find stuff that's really expensive to offensive coordinators we want them to have to think about man they're doing all this different stuff in the box they're doing all this different stuff here uh where for our guys it, it, it stays and maintains really simplicity uh, so that we are able to uh to execute and play fast but also uh, i think be confusing for offenses uh, and offensive coordinators so again here's a here's kind of our case for man free uh again we want to protect the middle of the field guys uh for us in division three uh that's the sh for us we're trying to protect that that area of the field so that quarterbacks are having to throw out routes having to throw stuff to the sidelines um that ball in the middle field is the shortest throw. And so it's the easiest throw. I, I need to take anybody and tell them to throw a post and have a guy who's fast run under it. I think throwing corner routes, throwing out routes <clears throat> are challenging. And that's what we want to force guys to do. We think man free allows us to be really simple in, uh, in scheme stuff, but in really creative in the blitz schemes and really simple in coverage. Right. And so man free and cover three, we get to be easy on the back end, right? Where we get to teach two things and then rep it a ton. Uh, and then we get to be as creative as we want in the box. We're going to put six guys in there and we can send any of them any different way we want. <clears throat> our whole thing we, we've gotten to as a, as a philosophy on our defense is 
<clears throat> the guy who watches the most film usually is that quarterback, right? At, at any level, he's the guy who's spending extra time in the office. He's learning all this stuff. Coach is in his ear. <clears throat> so we've gotten away from trying to confuse that guy. Uh, you know, we'll hold some coverage stuff to a point. Um, but our big thing is we want to confuse the fat kids. Um, and so we want to make those guys have to think uh, those guys aren't usually the ones watching the most film or putting the most work in. And so um, our whole philosophy is kind of flipped to how do we confuse big guys and get them to chase their tail a little bit. <clears throat> The other reason we love man free, uh, man, we played a ton of zone my first year here at Bethel. And um, it, the problem we ran into is guys, to, you know, it's hard to declare who's, who's it was, right? Well, I, I man matched this guy and I passed it. When do I pass it? What do I do? Um, and it just got to where it was so soft that we were, guys were able to just fit balls into holes that uh, we would get frustrated with on a third medium. So our whole thing was like, man, if we can be close to a guy and, and match him and on his hip, force that quarterback to be on um, while he's getting hit, while he's getting pressured, we felt like that gave us an advantage. Uh, and then another thing I would say is in man free in general, make it a culture and expectation. There was zero man played here um, before I got here for the last 10 years. Um, we kind of made the switch. It took us a year to kind of get into it. And the last two years have been pretty successful for us, as you'll see here. Uh, 2018, we made it to the quarterfinals. Um, and we're pretty successful on third down um, both those times, both these last two years. Uh, points per game have been pretty good. And these are really the only things we measure. We're not super into yards per play or um, how many passing yards, how many rushing yards we give up. Uh, we're really into, you know, how, how good are we on third down? It's the first thing we're going to look at every every week when we game plan. What is third down? What are we getting to? Uh, and then you got to be able to stop the run to go get after these guys. And so we think our fits and all of our stuff kind of feed into that. Just again, a quick graphic of um, what we've been able to do. <clears throat> if you look at these stats here of the difference uh, for completion percentage coming into a game uh, and then when they play us and then the uh, yards that they've thrown for per game uh, on average and then when they play us, the red are obviously negative or below it. And so we feel like we've been pretty uh, successful in being able to disrupt quarterbacks and, and make them have to struggle. I think the biggest thing for us when you look at this is, again, a ton of it. We're about 65%, 60% man free. Um, you look at the interception rate, uh, 1.5 to touchdowns given up 1.09. And then we're getting about three and a half sacks a game. And so we're just over three and a half sacks a game. So feel again, like we've been able to be successful with it, but it's a culture that you've got to teach and expectations. Okay. So <clears throat> excuse me today, we are going to uh, just talk through three simple drills that we do as defensive backs uh, and how they translate. And so I'm uh, going to coach through how we coach our guys. These are what we call dailies. We're going to do these every single day. Um, so we're going to take about 10 minutes of our indie time. And our guys know that this is what we're going to do. And so how it translates into a game, we'll show you some clips there. And then uh, we'll finish with kind of how we're teaching some of our whole stuff uh, in our man free. So first drill we're going to talk about here is shuffle breaks. Okay. Uh, one of the main things that we want to focus on, and this is kind of, this gets to be a, into the details here of how we're teaching this is uh, I'll draw this here for you. Uh, biggest thing we talk about when we're, we're our shuffle team. Sorry. First of all, we're a shuffle team. We don't backpedal here. Um, couple of reasons for that. Uh, we get high school kids from all over. Some are talented. Some are you know, raw football players who haven't played a lot of football. And so trying to teach back pedals uh, for us got frustrating just because, man, what rollover step, T-step, what do you do, leverage, all that stuff. And so we got everything to a shuffle. I'm sure, most of these kids have played pickup basketball before. They know how to shuffle and stay in front of guys. And so everything we do is out of a shuffle. Okay, and so uh, I'll explain that here in a second. You'll see some, some clips here in a sec. Um, Biggest thing for us is in our shuffle, we're, we're going to play with outside leverage on just about everything we do. And, and I'll explain why on that here as we go. Uh, but the shuffle break drill, here's the big key is like, if here is the ball, all right, and we are shuffling this way, we want to keep this downfield shoulder tilted in, right? So that allows us to break this way. It allows us to break this way. And it allows us to speed turn on a post, all right? You'll see some of the clips here on our drills. Guy's shoulder starts drifting away from the ball. They can't turn this way. They can't drive on a ball. It's going to cause their feet to be bad. So that's one of the big things we talk about uh, in this drill is where's your shoulder, right? And then we want to get our eyes to break point. So as we break, I want to I want to snap my eyes. We love this because it's both our man and our zone crossover. This is how we'll play man free. This is how we'll play cover three uh, for mainly our safety position, those, our overhang kind of nickel, and then that, our boundary safety. Okay, so here's the drill. All it is, if we're going to shuffle, shuffle, crossover, run, it's going to be on visual cues. Uh, we don't use cones because I don't, I don't, there's no cones in the uh, in the game, right? And so everything is going to be on a visual cue from the coach. 
Uh, we'll shuffle, we'll go downhill, we'll go in front, and then we'll go five yards behind. All right, so again, these are the main coaching points here. Show you some drill tape as we go. All right. So as you watch right here, so if you see number 24, this guy's shoulder sucks. So I'm over here. Guy's shoulder is facing out this way. Uh, not a great job. He's going to have a hard time breaking on anything, coming back downhill. So if you see his feet stutter, not great, feet underneath him, bad shape. The other two guys, not bad, shuffle, getting out, being able to get downhill. Okay, we'll see the next clip here. Same thing, 20 shoulder. There. He's going to go this way. It's not going to allow him to break on a 45 this way. So, again, visual cue. I'm giving him a go call or giving him go with hands. They're reading my hands. When my hands come down, they're breaking. But as you see, 24 kind of all the way off the screen because his shoulder's not very good. These other two guys do a better job keeping that shoulder in so they can stick and get downhill on a 45. All right, so now – kind of got on 24 a little bit for a shoulder and noticed that the shoulder in allows for those feet, especially when you're breaking behind, right? So this is breaking on an out route, breaking on something underneath, be able to transition the hips. Um, but because that shoulder is in, we're able to plant and this foot's able to drive out here. Whereas if the shoulder's drifting this way, there's no way for us to play and go. Okay. So, First drill we're going to do every day, and then here's a couple examples of it. So here we're going to watch 23 down here at the bottom. Again, shoulder stays in, able to get a good break on this ball with that 45-degree angle going out. Okay, now his eyes, here's the thing we're going to talk about, why we talk about eyes to break point. His eye break point on the break. Right? So vision on cue. Right now, his eyes to break point. His eyes don't get the break point until out of his break. We actually missed the receiver. He drops the ball. We're okay. Great break by him. No eyes to break point it gets us in trouble. Okay, here we go with 24 here. You're going to see a good picture of it. Eyes to break point. Okay, not a great deal here with a step. Steps behind himself, right? As we go, should be stick, should be driving downhill. Okay, so again, everything we do is out of a shuffle, guys. Uh, if we're going to play off, man, got to have a better plant foot there by 24. Great job on the on the shuffle break up top. So right now we're going to watch 23 here with the shuffle break. Stay on top. Really like where he gets to. Shoulder stay in. Isn't leaning. Um, again, he, he gets there a little bit early. But this is exactly what we want as far as our shuffle, getting out of it and going to break. Okay. Now, again, if you guys see some of this stuff, we're going to shuffle break with everybody, right? So 24 is, is technically our our cover three safety here. He's the, he's the middle of the field player. Uh, we are going to shuffle, shuffle, crossover, run in the middle of the third as well. So we're not going to run and sprint and back pedal that thing. Um, we are going to shuffle, shuffle, crossover, run the middle third, reading the shoulder uh, of that quarterback. Okay, here's a, here's a great example of it uh, up top. Uh, number five here is going to get a uh, shuffle break as well. Shuffle, stick the foot in, even on some run stuff, three-step stuff. We're in, we're in just a simple cover three zone here. It's going to stick the ball, shuffle, stick it, and able to come up and make a play. Again, we'll, we want to keep as much transition uh, as we can. We want to be as fast out of those transitions as we can. So great job by him there, being able to just shuffle and stick. We think this shows up everywhere. Uh, guys, again, same thing. Five, not great here. We've got to get on him on, on his stance. Kind of high, his feet are lazy. Uh, but again, no wasted time out of his break, stick the foot in the ground, shuffle, be able to drive up and make a play. So again, this drill is done every day for us. Uh, and I think you see it show up. I think that's the key for us that we want to see in, in everything we do is, are the drills showing up? 24, here's the shuffle break guy. Okay, so shuffle, shuffle, he gets a little lean out, but does a great job of not wasting space on his feet, exploding off that downfield foot. Uh, you know, we'll go get it. And then same thing with eight here. You see our free safety. He's going to cross over on to the middle third, stick the foot in the ground. And transitioning out of breaks is a big deal, guys. We want to be able to transition, not lose any time, not lose any space on some of that stuff. Here's a good one with the motion. 24 does a good job here of taking space out, shuffle, shuffle, stick the foot in the ground, break, break. So he's going to pat the feet, stick the foot, be able to go. No wasted movement, no wasted time, no wasted space there.
Okay, guys, this uh, it's a couple of things here that we just talk about when we're talking man free. Here's a just threw this in here just to kind of show you guys how we're going to handle some motion, right? So, uh, the rules for us and man free when we get motion is if my guy leaves, all right, I become the free guy. So, our free guy knows that he's the adjusted emotion just so that we can keep our leverage on everything, all right? So, right now, this corner now, my guy leaves, I become the free guy, I'm the free guy. I take leverage on the motion. So it's a way for us to not change eyes. Uh, you know, we started out, we bumped some of this stuff. It's where he'd bump here, he'd bump here, he'd bump here. We didn't want one guy to change three guys, right? So they move one guy, we're going to change two guys, right? So this guy's eyes change and this guy's eyes change. Everybody else stay locked, right? So if my guy moves, I become free. If not, I stay locked. So we we're not changing guys' eyes and, and man stuff, right? So you'll see the same thing here. Uh, again, it's just a little clip of the motion stuff. Stick the foot in the ground by 23. Does a good job. Stick the foot. Come back and, and get in the play. Okay, same thing here. Shuffle breaks. We're going to stay it. Good job by eight up top in the slot here. Shuffle, shuffle, stick the foot and go get it. Again, guys, like we don't have tremendous athletes here uh, to where we've got guys that are just, you know, going to lock guys up and play a bunch of man. So we have to teach some of this stuff. So shuffle, shuffle, stick. Again, the scoot technique here at the free safety, we think of just shuffle, shuffle. Uh, we call this a scoot, reading eyes. You know, we'll be in the fit and go play ball. Okay, here's a second drill we're going to do every day. This is just called play through hands. This is great for our guys. Um, think our guys like it just because of the competitiveness that we get to have with it. Um, so the whole point on this is I think the hardest thing to teach in man free is how do you get guys to not look back when they're beat, right? It's easy to play ball when we're on top or playing zone stuff. Uh, this drill is to, is to challenge guys to not look back. So we put them at a disadvantage, uh, and then they have to close out space and, and punch up. And so the biggest coaching point I think on this is, uh, punching up through hands. So we put the, put the wide receivers on the bottom of the numbers, DBs on the top of the numbers, and then we're going to throw fade balls to the sideline. It should be about a 10 yard drill, um, the whole point is if the DB can cut the route off, all right, then he can look back. If the DB can't cut the route off, we got to punch up through the hands. All right. And then one of the things we're going to talk about is we're going to always try to put, excuse me, we're going to always try to put the downfield shoulder. All right. So 17 is playing defense right now. He should be trying to get his balls over here. He should be trying to get this shoulder to cut off the chest of this wide receiver. If he does that, he can look back. If he doesn't, he's got to punch up through hand. All right, so as you see this here, does an okay job. I'd rather him not reach, but his job right now, the coaching point for, for the DB here is he is trying to sprint to cut this thing off, all right, and get in front of that guy to close the shoulder. Now, we talk all the time about if this guy posts us, all right, now we can speed turn and end up right back on top. But if we can't get that guy cut off, got to trust it and go play through hand. So, okay job here. Uh, uh, this is a better one of like, okay, 11 right now is B. He does not get this thing cut off. So he has got to now trust that I've got to go punch up through those hands. Hands. Sorry, my video choppy a little bit there. So punch up through the hands. Does a great job. Notice that when 17 jumps, we want to use the jump to close out one extra step, right? So when he jumps, we don't want to jump. Trust in that this guy has to bring that ball back down. And that's what we're gonna we're gonna have our vision on is those guys' hands. Hands. Okay, here's a, here's a great final one of two older guys doing it. Seven does a great job of spring to the cutoff, and then we call trap the wrist. So as eight goes to here, eight goes to put his hands up. Seven does a good job of chopping that wrist to gain control, look and lean and, and look up to the ball. So we'll see a great example here at 23 up top, our corner. Uh, again, we do this drill with all of our guys. Our corner up here, he's going to – this guy's about a 6'5 guy. We're about – he's about 5'10". Does a great job right here, if you can see, of him chopping the wrist, going to get that shoulder into the chest, and then going to play through hands, right? Punching up. We don't want to pull down on a football. Uh, pulling down is going to cause him to catch it, right? So we want to punch up through that hand if we are in this trail position. So does a great job of punching up through that. Okay, so now, again, same thing down here at corner. Uh, get into a little man-free action. Vertical inside release. Okay, so now, right, he's not on top, and he can't get to this top shoulder, right? So 
okay job with his eyes. He's, he's a freshman. He's a young guy, but does a great job of ripping at this backhand. So we always talk with our corners, right? If we're, if we're in trail technique, we want to rip this hand right here. Nobody's ever made a one hand catch with their, with their hand closest to the quarterback, all these one hand catches and all these catches come with this stop hand here. So you're going to see 33 does a great job of ripping the downfield hand on the point in contact when that ball comes, right? Like not great. He's beat, right? Like this is, this is not what we want. Great job of ripping that stop. Again, same thing with five down here. You're going to see the same thing. You're going to get a post ball. Five is going to do a pretty good job of staying on top and then ripping that downfield hand. Lean it. Should try to go cut it off. Does a good job of cutting it off, staying on top, and then a great job of ripping out his downfield stop hand. Okay, you're going to see up top, and this is a man coverage. Uh, Man free section here. Great job of eyes to break point. He gets the break, snap the eyes, punching through hands. Okay, again, this is something we're drilling every day with our guys. I think you've got to play the ball in the air. I think that's one of the hardest things for DBs to be able to do is how do you judge balls in the air? How do you play balls in the air? Um, what do you do once the ball gets there to the guy? You know, if I'm off, if I'm in, if I'm in phase, how do I be able to transition and go get that? So again, great job here. You see the transition, stick his foot. This kind of has all those drills wrapped up in a one. Crossover run, cut it off, stick the foot, go punch that thing out, ball in the air. We'll do back shoulder fades in that. Um, we'll do fades on the goal line, same type of thing. So down here at 23, uh, great job. Again, this guy's 6'7". 23 is, is probably 5'10". Great job here. Well, they called him pass interference for this, um, but but we're okay with this. This is what we want. Now, the thing he could have done better is cut this route off, right? So right now we're talking to him. His coaching point is get this shoulder into this chest and cut this route off and make this guy either post you or, or you be able to control the route up top. Great job of punching through hands there on the finish. Another good example up top, 33. Same type of deal. Cuts the route off, controls the route, and then punches on the finish. See it better from this angle here. It's 23 goes, or it's 33 goes. Great job on the punch. He's not pulling down, violent with the punch up through those hands uh, at the reception point. Again, I think you got to work some of this stuff. If you guys are, if we're going to expect it from our guys, how do we work it and drill it? Uh, here's my favorite clip. This is from our first year here. You're going to see two down here. Uh, I told him after this, this is going to be on every clinic I ever do as far as playing through hands. Uh, does a great job. Now, he's, he's not great as far as controlling the route, right? Like We'd love to see him get that right shoulder into the chest to cut this thing off. Um, but does an unbelievable job of punching up at the reception point, punches up through hands, and then it lands right in his right in the bread basket there. So uh, great clip, great teaching point there uh, on how we want to play through hands. Get another example up top. Controls the route, does a great job. Number two does a great job of, of really controlling this vertical route. Takes out space. Space is our enemy as a, as a DB in man coverage. Take out that space of that receiver. Squeeze the route. He's on top. Shoulders into the chest. He breaks. We break. Transition the eyes. Transition the hands. Be able to play through that low ball right there. Another example, this is more of a zone cut up here for us. Uh, turns into essentially three because we get three vertical threats. Two does a great job of now controlling the route, being on top, get the shoulder into the chest, and then go and play through that ball in the air, right? And so we're going to do a deep ball drill like this uh, usually once a week too where we're just going to throw deep posts and have those guys have to judge it and go play, go play that ball in the air. Okay, so our last one here that we're going to do is what we call speed turns or post-post corner work, all right? So, <clears throat> again, we're trying to cut off the post, all right? So if the ball is in here and we're getting posted, we're going to be outside leverage. So we're trying to cut the post off and make that guy turn that corner, and then we'll, we'll speed turn to that, okay? But the whole point of this is we got to cut the post, all right? So we want to eliminate that. We're going to play with outside leverage because we know we're going to have what we call low hole help and high hole help, right? So if the ball's in here, we want to funnel everything to these guys, okay? So we have to be able to defend outs, corners, um, 
anything outside of us so that we can we can funnel those guys inside. All right. So again, space is our enemy. You're gonna hear us talk about that a lot. Same thing on that ball in the air. We gotta close off space to cut it off. Same thing on our post post corner. We gotta close off space to cut that off. We wanna stay on top of the routes. Okay, so <clears throat> one of the coaching points here that we're gonna talk about is we're, we're gonna tell our guys, we used to tell them five yards, three yards. Um, one of the things that we changed on that was as the DB is here, here's the wide receiver. We're going to tell him to just stress this guy, right? So we're going to say, hey, stress him. By that, we mean try to step on his toes, try to get to that place where you kind of make him uncomfortable, and then we're going to make our move. So for some guys, it may be three steps and maybe five steps, uh, depending on your stride, depending on your speed, and depending on how fast this guy gets out, right? So we're going to say, hey, stress him, and then go here. So as a coach, I'm going to stand behind him. <clears throat> I'm going to give him either a post, a vertical, or a corner. Uh, so we're going to say stress him in here, uh, stress him in there, stress him in there. Uh, and the whole point is being able to react and then being able to close that space up. You can kind of put whatever route you want in. Those are the three routes that we think are the hardest to to roll with. All right. And so again, we're going to say stress them and then make your cut. So right here you see four. Eh, okay job. We'd like to see him speed turn. The whole point of this is we want to work a speed turn drill. Seven does a good job again. Now, as we speed and find this, seven's got to turn it. He's still trying to get on top shoulder and cut that deal off. Okay, the whole point is we want to cut that thing off, sprint to it, but again, make that ball get thrown the furthest throw that we can, which is to the sideline. Great job here by Fort. Again, shuffle, shuffle, go take that space out, cut the shoulder off. Same thing with seven here. Shuffle, shuffle, go get that shoulder into the chest, control the route, be on top, <clears throat> almost like a rebound. We want to box these guys out, funnel those guys to the inside, and then be able to react to anything outside of us. Here's a vertical one. Same thing as we control this here. He's going vertical or outside leverage. Or sorry, this is post again. Outside leverage, we want to be able to get into this thing. Okay. Same thing. Control the route, control the route. So here's a couple of good clips of it. Uh watch eight here to start, and then we'll watch 23 here at corner. So eight here to start is going to get a corner route with outside leverage. Shuffle, shuffle, stick. So he does a great job of cutting this route off, right? Trying to get on top shoulder and then be able to speed turn. And he is not a tremendous athlete by any means, but speed turns and ends up on top of this corner route. Okay. Exactly where we want this guy to be. Same thing up top with number two. We'll watch him. He gets a little speed turn here as well. He gets stemmed up a little bit. Feet not great. Ends up on top though. We also have a hole player. So he knows he's got some help inside to start. Ends up on top exactly what we want. 23 down here is a great example for us of why we want to take out space. Okay. And so we want to talk about cutting the route off. So if he just runs parallel with this guy down here the whole way down the field, right? And this guy runs an out route. We created space. That's a harder break for us. Okay. So as this guy's going vertical, we want to work to get into that. So now when this guy breaks out, it's a lot shorter of a break for us. We'll see here. Does a great job of going to cut the route and close the space. So 23 goes to close the space here. Ends up being in a great spot now because he's eliminated the space on the out cut. If this is a good ball, we've got a chance. Okay, now we're going to look up top here in the slot. We're just <clears throat> going to get a slot corner out, a little smash action here uh, up to the top of the screen. Good job by this guy up here. Just being able to shuffle, shuffle. He's funneling that guy, knowing that, hey, I, I got to be high on top of the post. We've got a post player working towards it. Speed turn ends up exactly where he needs to get to. We're in good shape. Okay, another example here of eight in the slot. Again, I, I think a lot of offenses want to run some of the slot fade stuff. Uh, when you hitch these guys up, you just run that slot fade to the boundary or to the field. Uh, it's a good job by eight. Again, not a tremendous athlete, but affecting the throw, making this be wide. And this is a hard throw, guys. Like, I, I just think, especially if you can get after the quarterback a little bit, which we were, were able to do by confusing some of these big guys. Um, but again, he's taking a shot, trying to throw slot fade to 35 yards downfield. Uh, we got a chance. Another point I want to make here is, again, this is why we shuffle crossover run at, at the middle third or the free safety spot. This guy's a yard and a half outside the hash on the snap uh, and is able to get to about uh, halfway between that thing on the numbers. And we just really like that as far as not wasting time in the back pedal or trying to get to the middle of the field and back pedal. Uh, he's going to shuffle, shuffle, and just read QB intent. There's another clip of seven with a great job of here's this, here's it now with our post. So this is our drill. Shuffle, shuffle, cut the post. 
shovel, shovel, cut the post. One of the things we tell these guys is that feel free to slip anything in between the hashes, okay? Because they should know they've got middle safety help over top. So it's a good job. You see 24 coming into the picture here late to where he's going to be able to make a play if we miss this. But we want our guys to be aggressive and take chances, right? So seven does a good job. He's on top, breaks, slips it. We're in good shape. And you see it up top as well uh, with our safety up top, just on top able to kind of play that low hip almost uh, anything kind of this dig kind of shallow post area. Again, two down here, same thing. Now he's getting the vertical, right? So shuffle, shuffle is a vertical, is a post, is a post corner, cut the vertical off, fade. Again, all kind of all three drills played into it here. Shuffle, shuffle, crossover, cut the route, go play the ball in the air. Here's a good example, again, uh, of how this translates, guys, for all of our phases. We don't have a ton of indie time, right? Just like kind of I think all these coaches are, how do we maximize indie time? Here's a great example. We do this with everybody, right? So we're going to shuffle, shuffle, speed turn, shuffle, shuffle, cut the post, and vertical. Here's a great job by 18 of being able to get to uh, a wildly thrown corner out from a middle third position because of a speed turn, right? So, again, we're going to drill this with, how we do it there. Then we're also going to do some deep ball stuff where we have this guy shuffle, shuffle, and we're just going to throw corners and fades uh, kind of zero, right? So it's just him working and then just the corner working, just the corner working, just the safety working uh, so that we can maximize some of that any time and get these guys just seeing these drills show up on tape. Uh, so as you see 18 here, shuffle, shuffle, crossover, middle of the field, speed turn, go play that ball in the air, has a chance I and mean, gets the, three yards on the bottom of the numbers from the middle of the field on a, on a corner out. So exactly what we're looking for from that guy. Okay. Here's a great example of guys doing it well and then guys doing it poorly. So you'll see one down here, a corner to the bottom does a good job of cutting the route. And then he calls this is what we call under turn, right? So my, his eyes suck. First of all, he's looking at the quarterback and peeking, but he should cut the route, right? And as this guy comes vertical here, we should speed turn to be on top, right? So he does it. He underturns. We lose all our momentum, all our speed, and now we're in chase mode. Okay, so now what we're looking for up top, a good example, he gets he gets kind of corner posted, right? So he gets turned around a little bit, does a great job with his hips of just speed turning this thing. Speed turn and on top, end up on top. Does a great job, ends up on top. We're in okay shape there. Okay, so here's kind of the difference for us. And I, I talked about we have a low hole and a high hole mentality. Uh, I think one of the things that's been great for man free for us is uh, we're always going to have a, what we call low hole player who's going to be about five yards over the ball. And we're going to have what we call a hug player. Uh, and that guy is manned up on the back. And so for us, we're able to manipulate the front and how we how we call some stuff that is going to allow us to uh, to take any any one of our guys and hug them on the back and any one of our front six and, and put them in what we call a hole position. And so um, – Again, like I talked about in the beginning, this allows us to just be really multiple, right? So coverage, coverage rules don't change back here. We can manipulate any six of these guys, line them up wherever we want, put them wherever we want in order to get what we need to get from a, from a coverage standpoint here. So um, you'll see kind of, we'll tag kind of pre, pre snap, who's the hole and who's the hug guys. So right now this guy's going to be your hug player. This guy's what we call our hole player. Um, uh, you know, it's just kind of dabbling into some of that creeper stuff that we get. Uh, so right here, you're going to see a, a guard or a tackle, excuse me. It's going to be occupied with 34 up there. 34 knows that he's a hole player. Right? So he's going to take his step to occupy, and he's going to sit right here in this hole to help us on any cross routes. Again, with outside leverage, we know that we're going to have help on the inside. Uh, but they're going to leave an All-American unblocked here, uh, which which is really good for us. Right, so he's going to, you see 34, five yards over the ball. You guys be on where the quarterback's eyes are. Does a great job here of just holding off this crosser just long enough for a guy to cut the shoulder off. We dabbled in peeling on some stuff and we just got away from that, uh, the peel aspect because guys got slow and tentative. So we just, well, we don't peel stuff anymore. We're going to tell a guy, hey, you have the running back and everybody else can go cut it loose and let it rip. Okay, so same thing with our whole player here. Uh, we got a hug, we got a hole. So 20, 
up here is he's going to be your hug and he's going to be your whole settle settle again allows us to help on crossers like not great here from a coverage standpoint guys running away from us but this is what you're going to get with outside leverage uh, got to buy enough time for our cover guys to close out space uh, to that top shoulder and be able to go Again, here's another example of it. Just getting your hug, getting your whole extra guy in, getting hats to the party. 44 does a good job of settling. Here's a great picture, too, of your uh, – two does a great job, cut the route off. 23 does a great job, cut the route off, and then speed turn. Both of those guys end up on top. So uh, kind of a good picture of, hey, all right, whole guy, settle, hug guy, running back stays in, we're going to hug, we can get him extra. We're in good shape, okay? On top, on top, uh, brings it all together there. <laughs> okay, again, another great example of hug and hole. This is one you wish you had back. But again, get to the hole, settle, five yards over the ball, outside leverage. Again, we're getting kind of that reverse whip, out and then whip back inside. Um, Tough route with outside leverage. Does a good job by our, our DB of sticking a foot in the ground, going to play it. Great job by our whole player being in the right spot. You'll see our hug player here. Uh, 22 has the back. Right? So the backward flare, he's got him. Uh, the back stays in protection. We get to add him in. Does a great job. Could be a little bit tighter. Um, help us, but again, get a hit on the quarterback. Get what we need to get. Got to catch the rock. It's a good example of it again, again, lining these guys up wherever, kind of being able to, to play with alignments. Uh, we really like about this is you look here, uh, 22 is our hug. All right? So 22 is hugging this thing, does a great job, gets downhill. That back is staying in. We get to hug that thing fast now. Hug it fast, hug it fast. Got to go upfield shoulder. Okay. Here's a, here's a coaching point for 47 when we talk about this whole stuff. That's why we want him over the ball. Okay, now he sees three-step. I, I get that, and, and he was a pretty savvy guy. Would love to get him over the ball so that if this thing breaks, we've got a guy to kind of recontain. All right, so that's why we like that whole player to be over the ball. And, again, you can make different rules for those guys. If you got a guy who can scramble, you got a guy who can really uh, – so this example right here, they had a guy who had, uh, I think – 55 more catches than anybody else on the team. Uh, and so we were able to just tag this whole player of, hey, this is where you should go. This is where you should look. You always want to open to this guy. got to know where he is, right? And so um, we're able to tag. Hey, we want the whole player to be towards this guy's side uh, in each of our calls. And so, again, some of this RPO stuff uh, gives yourself just a little bit of a chance uh, being able to get a guy steal something. Here's another example. I think there's another drop. Uh, but again, hugging and holing, we just really like that the kind of the freedom it gives our guys. Uh, again, this 19 again dropped a freebie for us. Uh, but we love what that whole player can do to us. Here's a great example from a playoff game. Uh, again, not it, it, it just protects as a DB coach. I love it because it protects us uh, on any of these in-breaking routes. We're going to try to take away outs and fades and and corner routes, uh, funnel things to the inside is what we're talking about. 34 does a good job here. Uh, I'm just reading eyes, right? So same thing. Like he knew where their stud was. 89 was their stud receiver. He's going to float a little bit that way uh, and able to get in the passing lane. Two is not great here at corner. It kind of gets all turned around. Feet kind of suck. Doesn't drive very well. Um, but because of the presence of a low hole, we're able to pick this thing off and take it to the house. Here's an example, again, of, of a hug player, right? And this is what we talk about from a hug standpoint of he's got the running back right now, okay? So depending on running backs in, we get what we want from a blocking standpoint. Running back stays in and picks him up. Uh, they got nobody left to pick up 34. So does a great job. Could hug even a little bit faster, uh, but just allows us some freedom to what we're doing up front. Again, same thing. We, we just like the freedom it allows us to play with, uh, especially this man-free stuff. Gives us the ability to kind of get, get kind of creative up top. Uh, same thing here, 20. We'll see from this angle. 20 right now is a hug player. 
20 has the running back. Running back stays in the pass protect. We get to add in. Okay. So the great job of adding in forces a fumble. Big play for us in this game. Uh, again, another, and we'll run this on our base stuff and our third down stuff, guys. This is this is kind of universal for our program. Uh, again, not great. Like we get beat here at, at at DB. Like we're not great. We get this vertical drive route here. Um, good way to beat some man free stuff where our whole player gets to where he needs to get to and, and comes up with a big on third down ball. See the ball thrown. Go play ball. Again, last one here, or last one, 34 here. Great job. He's the hug player, right? So he gets flare right now. We're able to go. Uh, again, confusing big guys up front, guys. That's that's our biggest thing. Uh, how do we confuse the big guys up front uh, and make them have to make poor decisions or have to react uh, in a way that we can we can gain the advantage? Okay, so uh, guys, that's all I got. Uh, feel free if you want to reach out. Um, again, we, we like to dabble. In, uh, in some of that man free stuff and being able to dictate some fronts and dictate protections. Uh, and, and it's been really good for us, I think, as far as uh, what we do and how we keep it simple uh, and yet try to be as complex as we can uh, in the in the upfront and get those guys running all over the place. And so uh, if you got questions, feel free to reach out to my email uh, on Twitter. So thanks, guys.